Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, so in this video we are gonna see, what if betrayed Naruto is stuck in different universe, Naruto x Raven x Arella, and join Team Titan, this is part 2 and subscribe and like for more, let's get in the video. Sasuke, I'm at point B Sasuke said. Sakura, I'm at point C Sakura said. I got the cat. Naruto said. Naruto, you were supposed to eat for all of us to get in position. Kakashi said. Yeah, like I'm gonna wait for all of you just to catch a damn cat. Let's take this thing to the mission office and get this chore over with. Naruto said. Is the cat still alive? Kashina asked. No. Naruto said. You weren't supposed to kill it. Narumi said. You idiot. You just bailed our mission for us. Menma said. Don't care. Naruto said and broke his headset he was wearing. Mission office. What did you do to my Torah? A fat lady asked. I killed it. Naruto said. Naruto, the mission was to find Tora and bring her back. Minato said. We completed the mission. If she wanted the stupid cat alive, then she should have been more specific in how it's brought back. Naruto said. I actually don't care. I wanted a dog, but my husband keeps buying me cats. I'll pay you quadruple for getting rid of the cat. She said and paid them quadruple the amount. I like this one. You may be able to join the Fire Guardian 12 if you do well in the Chunin exams. The lady said. That's if I even last here. I plan on leaving this shithole of a village, so don't bet your hopes up lady. Naruto said. Naruto shut up. Sakura yelled. You're going to get Ad in trouble. Narumi yelled and Naruto just placed both of them in a C-rank Jinjutsu. Listen here loser. You've got three seconds to release my sister and her friend from that Jinjutsu or else. Menma said. Or else what? Naruto asked. Or else you won't like what I do next. Menma said. Menma started drawing on the Nine Tails chakra and Naruto just stared at him with a blank expression. Naruto added more and more chakra into the Jinjutsu, causing Narumi and Sakura to scream out some more and even louder. Menma grew a tail from the Nine Tails chakra and charged at Naruto who just grabbed him by the throat and choked him until he passed out. He dropped Menma to the floor and kicked him over to where he knew Jiraiya was hiding. Control your pet fox before I put him down for good. Tell that pervert hiding that he sucks as a teacher if this is all his students can do. Naruto said. Ah uh, perhaps we should take a C-rank mission. Kakashi said. Are they ready? Minato asked looking at Naruto. Don't look at me. Look at the rest of this team. Naruto said. They're ready. Maybe this mission will push them all to become better. Kashina said. Send in our visitor. Minato said and the door opened revealing a drunk old man. What the? A bunch of little snot-nosed kids? The pink-haired girl looks like she'll faint if she broke a nail. The emo kid looks like somebody killed his favorite pet. The small redeed girl can't even control her own bladder. The one-eyed scarecrow probably can't see how many fingers I'm holding up. Then we have the little one with the idiotic look on his face. You really expect me to believe he's a ninja? The man asked. Who's the little one with the idiotic look on his face? Mema asked and everyone just looked at him. I'll demolish you. Let me get my hand on him. Mema said while being held back by Kakashi. You can't demolish the client, Mema. It doesn't work that way. Kakashi said. At least the dual hair colored boy looks like a ninja. The redeed beauty though, she can just do the mission by herself with me. Maybe we can get to know each other better. The man said and then a kunai went through his bottle of sake and was stuck right by his ear. Watch how you talk about my mother. Next time I won't miss. Naruto said and glared at him. Sorry. Won't happen again. The man said. It better be. One slip up during the mission and I won't hesitate to remove what makes you a man and shove it down your throat. What's your name anyway? Naruto asked. I am Tazuna, a master bridge builder, and I must return to my country. I'm building a bridge there that would change your world, and I expect you to get me there safely, even if it means giving up your life. Tazuna said. Well, this is Kakashi Haddock and Kashina Uzumaki Namikas. They're the jonin in charge of leading this mission. Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno, Menmi Uzumaki Namikas, Narumi Uzumaki Namikas and Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Minato said. It's just Naruto Uzumaki. I dropped the Namika's name years ago. Naruto said. All right everyone, pack for a three week long mission and meet us at the gates in an hour. Kakashi said and everyone left. Naruto, can you stay back for a bit? Minato asked. I could but I'm not. Naruto said. 
As your Hokage, I order you to stay back. Minato said with authority. As a gen into this village I clearly don't like, I say no. Naruto said and vanished in a shunshin. How does a gen know that Jutsu already? Jiraiya asked. Guess who trained him and you know? Kashina said. Shizuya Chiha. Minato answered. He was well known for his Jinjutsu and his ability to use the shunshin. Jiraiya said. Exactly. Kashina said. Well, you should get ready for your mission. Your team should do good. After all, you have the two strongest genin on your team. Jiraiya said. Who? Kashina asked. Menma and Narumi. Minato said. They're not the strongest genin. Certainly top five, but they're not the strongest. Kashina said. Kashina, they're borderline jonin level shinobi. There's no way they aren't the strongest genin. Jiraiya said. You're right, they are jonin level shinobi, but that's only when they use two tails of the nine tails chakra. Take away the nine tails chakra, and they're just mid genin level shinobi. They refused to learn any tojutsu, and both settled for a random brawling style. You were there when they didn't want to learn fuinjutsu. They'll never be able to do jinjutsu and can't really get out of jinjutsu as you saw earlier. Ninjutsu wise, they only know the shadow clones in two of the academy three. You two allowed them to only rely on the nine tails chakra and failed to actually teach them anything. I heard about you having Naruto do an extra two jutsas for his headband. That's the reason he wants to leave this village now. Kashina said. He wants to leave? Why? Minato asked. Because he doesn't like the village or its people. Besides me, Shizun and Danko, he doesn't have any ties to this village. He's already made a slash mark through his headband. I'll give him six months to a year before he leaves, and I might not join in stopping him. Kashina said. He's just a genin. We can send a chunin after him and get him back. Jiraiya said. See, that won't work. You'll need to send an Anbu squad after him. He's almost as strong as Kakashi or possibly stronger than him. I bonded and sparred with him a few times over the years. I've been fighting him at mid jonin speeds, and he was able to keep up with me. He's the strongest genin. He's essentially a seal master. His tojutsu is probably mid anbu level. Jinjutsu is, dare I say at the level of Shisui when he was his age. It might be better. Ninjutsu, he has four chakra natures and mastered them all. His kinjutsu is good as well, he just doesn't have a sword that works for him. He's years ahead of all the genin we have this year, and most chunin and jonin. Kashina said. I thought you were supposed to be training Menma and Narumi. We need to make sure they're strong and don't fall on that path of darkness. Jiraiya said. I'm with Jiraiya on this one Kashina. We agreed to teach Menma and Narumi together. Minato said. That was the plan, but you two decided to ignore everything I wanted to teach them, and made them only focus on brawling and some basic chakra control exercises. No ninjutsu, no lessons on breaking jinjutsu, no tojutsu other than fighting like a common thug. No vuinjutsu lessons and no kinjutsu lessons. I stumbled on Naruto reading a level 10 ceiling book when he was 8, and decided I would try to mend the broken relationship we had, and we'd become like an actual mother and son. Kashina said. We're all waiting for you mom. Naruto said appearing in the office again. I'm on my way. Kashina said and left. Naruto. Stay back for a second. Minato said. No. Naruto said and vanished. This isn't good. With Naruto being so strong, Menma and Narumi will become obsessed with being stronger than him and will possibly do anything to get strong. We need to train them harder now. Jiraiya thought. Minato. We need to up Menma and Narumi's training. If they see Naruto's true strength they can begin to obsess over power and take any way they can. Jiraiya said. I know. We'll talk to them after the mission. Minato said. What about Naruto? Jiraiya asked. I'll have an Anbu unit keep an eye on him whenever he's in the village. Since he's a flight risk, I'll have to hold him back from being promoted. He can still compete in the Chunin exams, but he won't be able to make Chunin. He'll stay at Genin until he is no longer a flight risk. Minato said and Jiraiya nodded, unaware that Kashina was right outside the door listening. Team 7. Yeah. All right. Menma exclaimed as they walked out of the village gates. What are you getting so excited about, Menma? Sakura asked. This is the first time I ever left the village. I'm a traveler now. Menma said looking around. Hey, am I supposed to trust my life to this runt? He's a joke. Tazuna said and Menma stopped looking around. 
He's with us and both Kashina and I are Jonin, so you don't need to worry. Kakashi said. He's just excited about being out of the village. I'm sure all of them are. Kashina said. I know I am. Narumi said. I've been out of the village before with my family. Sakura said. Hey Chen. Sasuke said. Hey. Never insult a ninja. It's a big mistake. I'm one of the greatest ninja ever. Someday I'm going to become Hokage and you'll look up to me. My name's Menma Uzumaki Namikas. Remember it. Menma said. Let's just go. Kakashi said. Hokage are powerful and wise. You are puny and brainless. The day you become Hokage, I'll sprout wings and fly. Tazuna said. Ah. Shut up. I'm willing to do anything to become Hokage, no matter what it takes. When I do, everyone will have to admit that I'm the top ninja, including you. Mema said. You can start by shutting up. A Hokage wouldn't yell at the top of his lungs like a dumbass and possibly get his team killed. Naruto said and walked away while taking a glance into the trees, something Kashina caught onto. What's the matter? Kashina whispered as she caught up to Naruto. This isn't a C-ranked mission. We're being followed by two chunin level ninja, and if I had to guess, Tazuna is their target. There's two more further ahead. One of them is a low jonin level shinobi. The other is as strong as Kakashi. Naruto whispered. We have to go back. Kashina whispered. No, we don't. We have a Kage level Kanoichi, an elite Jounin and a mid Anbu level Jenin. We'll be fine. Naruto said. Yes, but you've never fought anyone outside of me. Kashina said. Not true. That old man Danzo, who's on the council, kept sending his illegal Anbu after me over the years, and I've had to fight them off. He thinks I still have some of the nine tails in me, but me and you know that I don't. He stopped sending them when I was eleven since they would never return. Naruto said. Why didn't you tell me? Kashina asked. Because your mother instincts would kick in and you'd go and kill him. Can't have one of the three people I actually care about in this village get sent away because of Denzo. He'll get what's coming to him, but for now, careful planning is needed. Naruto said. Excuse me, Mr. Tazuna? Sakura asked. What is it? Tazuna asked. Your country is the land of waves, right? Sakura asked. Yeah, what of it? Tazuna asked. Kakashi-sensei, there are ninja in that country too, aren't there? Sakura asked. No, there are no ninja in the land of waves. But in other countries there are hidden villages, each with their own different customs and cultures, where ninja reside. Kakashi said and paused before continuing. To the people of this continent, the existence of shinobi villages means strength, military strength. In other words, that's how they protect themselves and maintain the balance of power with neighboring countries. The ninja villages are not controlled by any government. They're independent and have equal status. A small island like the Land of Waves has natural protection from the sea, so there's no need for a ninja village. The five ancient lands that possess shinobi villages are the lands of fire, water, lightning, wind and earth. Each occupying vast territories. Together they are known as the five great shinobi nations. Only the leaders of these hidden villages are permitted the name Kage, which means shadow. Hokage, Mizukage, Raikage, Mizukage and Tsuchikage. These are the leaders of the five shadows that reign over thousands of ninja. Kakashi said. Then Lord Hokage is really important. Sakura said. Our dad is pretty awesome. Menma said. Yeah, he's the strongest ninja in the village. Narumi said. He's not the strongest. He hasn't really trained in a decade. I bet mom could even beat him now if she wanted to. Naruto thought and smirked with a chuckle. Hey. Kakashi said to Naruto. What? Naruto asked. You just doubted Minato-sensei, didn't you? Kakashi asked. Yeah, I did. What are you going to do about it? Naruto asked. He's not going to do anything, but I will. Menma said pulling out a kunai. Then do something. Naruto said. He was subtly behind Menma who froze and dropped his kunai as he felt Naruto holding his own kunai at his throat. The only people who saw him move were Kashina and Kakashi. He's fast. Sakura thought. He's only a genin. How can he move that fast already? Sasuke thought. One move and I'll take you out Naruto. Narumi thought getting a kunai ready. Naruto. Stop that's enough. Kashina said and Naruto removed his kunai from Menma's neck. Anyway, there are no ninja battles in a C-ranked mission, so you can relax. 
Kakashi said to Sakura. And we're not going to run into any foreign enemy ninja or anything like that. Sakura said and Kakashi laughed. Not likely. Kakashi said. They continued walking and passed a puddle on the ground. Sakura, Mema, Narumi, Sasuke and Tazuna thought nothing of the puddle. Naruto, Kakashi and Kashina however, all knew it was a trap. Kakashi looked at Kashina out of the corner of his eye and she nodded slightly. Naruto kept his impassive face and acted as if nothing happened. They walked some more and out of the puddle came two shinobi and they wrapped some chains around Kakashi and Kashina who were then ripped to shreds. Mom. Menma and Narumi yelled. The two enemy ninja appeared behind Menma and Narumi and went to attack them. Before they could do anything, Sasuke jumped into action and threw a kunai and shuriken, pinning the enemy chain to a tree. Sasuke landed on their gauntlets and pushed them away from the tree until the chains broke. The enemy ninja then ran away from them and strayed at Sakura who was guarding Tazuna. She ran in front of Tazuna with a kunai ready and Sasuke went in front of her to help. Before they knew what happened, Kakashi and Kashina had both of the ninja in a headlock. Hi. Kakashi said. Hey guys. Kashina said. Kakashi and Kashina sensei. They're alive. Sakura thought. Huh, show off. Sasuke thought. Wait what? Mema asked. I thought you both were dead. Narumi exclaimed. We used a substitution jutsu and a small jinjutsu. Kashina said. Sorry we didn't help you right away, Mema. I didn't mean for you to get hurt. We just didn't think you'd freeze up like that. Kakashi said. They saved me after all. Tazuna thought. Good job Sasuke. You too, Sakura. Kakashi said, and then they heard a loud scream. So, Tazuna. Not that I care, but why did you lie about the mission? Naruto asked. What do you mean? Kashina asked. This is an A-ranked mission. He needs an escort because Gato of Gato's shipping business is bleeding the land of waves bad and Tazuna is the only hope they have. He's building a bridge and Gato doesn't want that to happen. These two ninja are after Tazuna to kill him and if they fail, they have two more accomplices up ahead waiting for us. Naruto said. How do you know? Kakashi asked. While you were giving heaps and praise to Sasuke and his fangirl, I was using a Jinjutsu to torture and interrogate our little buddy over there. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I'd like to keep going. I want to fight whoever the shinobi is ahead of us. Naruto said. Well, we can continue, but I'd have to send for backup. Teammate is the only available team so they would have to meet up with us. Kashina said and Naruto groaned. Can it not be teammate? He asked. What's wrong with teammate? Kashina asked. Kurunai is fine, I know her through Anko. It's her team that's the problem. Kiba is a horny little boy who thinks he's the best and never knows how to lie down like a good little doggy that he is. Shino has one more time to put one of his bugs on me or I'll kill him in front of everybody and Hinata is the worst of them all. Naruto said. Hinata is so sweet though. What could be bad about her? Kashina asked. She's a damn stalker. She constantly follows me around at M village and even uses that Byakugan to try and spy on me. I'd rather die than go on a mission with them. Naruto said. We need the backup though. Kakashi said. They're a tracking team with a jonin instructor who specializes in jinjutsu. They won't be much help. I can do jinjutsu better than Kurunai, and my sensing ability is way better than their entire team. I can feel people over 20 miles away in all directions without even trying, and I can even tell their emotions. We have a Kage level ninja, an elite jonin level ninja who should honestly be a Kage level shinobi by now, but decided to slack off, and then we have me who can take on an Anbu head on. We're fine. Naruto said. Well, what do you all think? Kakashi asked. I'm going. I don't want my first mission out of the village to go on my record as a failure. Menma said. He's right. I say we go on. Sasuke said. Yeah. We're the Hokage's children, we can handle this. Narumi said. I, I'm in as well. Sakura said not wanting to disappoint Sasuke. Well, let's go then. Kashina said. They kept walking and throughout the trip, Sakura was constantly asking Sasuke out on a date. Menma and Narumi were busy arguing over who's stronger between the two, and Naruto was hanging back keeping aware of his surroundings. They made it to a boat and were carried across the water taking them to the other side. This fog so thick you can't see anything. Sakura said. The bridge isn't far now. 
Our destination's just ahead, the land of waves. The man rowing the boat said then as they sailed further, the bridge that was being built came into view. Whoa. It's huge. Menma said. What? Quiet. I told you, no noise. Why do you think we're traveling like this, huh? Cutting off the engine and rowing, moving through the dense fog so they don't see us. The man whispered harshly making Menma cover his mouth. Naruto, what Jinjutsu did you use back there? Kashina asked. I can't tell you right now. Naruto said. Why not? Kashina asked. Because it has to do with a secret I haven't told anybody. Naruto said. You do know I can force you to tell us. We are your jonin instructors after all. Kakashi said. You do realize I can create a seal in less than a second and kill all of us, right? Naruto asked. He's bluffing. Narumi said. Yeah, only mom, dad and pervy sage can do that. Menma said. He's not lying. He's a seal master and is the youngest seal master in Konoha history, and soon to be in Yuzumaki history. Within a few years he'll be better than me, and I'm the best seal master there is alive. Kashina said. You're better than Lord Fourth? Sakura asked. I'm the one who got him into sealing. Kashina said. Wait, even though he's a seal master, you're better than him? How is that possible? Sakura asked. He's a seal master by Konoha standards. By Uzumaki standards, he's a rookie. Naruto's considered an intermediate Funjutsu user. Only thing Minato has over him is speed, since he's been making seals for almost 20 years. Give Naruto another year or two and he'll be better than Minato. Kashina said. Whatever. Me and Menma are still stronger than him. Narumi said. Let's put your skills to the test then. Naruto said and jumped off the boat and stood on the water. How's he doing that? Sakura asked. Please, I can do that too. Menma said, and when he jumped off the boat he started to drown. Naruto. Help him. Sakura whispered harshly. No. Naruto said and Kakashi made a clone go and save Menma. Why didn't you save your brother? Kakashi asked glaring at Naruto. He's not my brother. I have no family other than my mother. If he wants to jump off the boat like an idiot knowing he can't stand on water or swim, it's not my fault if he drowns. Naruto said. I'll be sure to write you up. Potentially have you stripped of your ninja license. Kakashi said. Then do it. It makes everything easier for me when I decide to leave that shithole of a village. I'll be a civilian and I can leave the village if I want to without any ninja coming after me. Naruto said. We're approaching the shore. Tazuna, we've been very fortunate. No one had noticed us so far. The man said. Nice going. Tazuna said. They sailed a bit more and went through a runner underneath the bridge. There was a bright light at the end of the tunnel, and once they were out, they saw trees and no more fog. The boat reached shore and everyone exited the boat. That's as far as I go. Good luck. The man said. Right. Thank you for taking such a risk. Tazuna said. Just be careful. The man said and started the boat engine. Okay. Take me to my home and I mean get me there in one piece. Tazuna said. Right. Kakashi said. They started walking again and everyone was surrounding Tazuna. Mema and Sasuke were covering the front. Sakura and Narumi were on the sides, and Naruto was in the back with Kashina and Kakashi. Along the way Menma was trying to prove himself and started jumping at the slightest sound, acting as if he was on guard. They walked a bit longer, and Naruto smirked, and Kakashi looked to his right making Menma throw a kunai into the bushes. Sakura had enough and smacked him in the head. Would you do that? Someone really is following us. I mean it. Menma said. Yeah right. Stop acting like a dumb kid. Sakura said. Kakashi ignored them and walked into the bushes where Menma threw his kunai. He saw the kunai was just above the head of a white rabbit who was scared. Kakashi then realized that a rabbit shouldn't have white fur this time of the year. Up in the trees looking down at them, there was another shinobi in the trees with a big sword on his back. Naruto already knew he was there, as well as his little helper that was further back in the trees. So, they're already here. Kakashi thought glancing into the trees. No wonder the demon brothers failed their mission. It's the copy ninja and the red hot blooded habanero of the leaf village. Kakashi Haddock of the Sharingan and Kashina Uzumaki Namikas. I can handle Kakashi myself. Kashina however, she'll be a tough opponent. The man thought as he vanished and then threw his sword at them. Everyone get down. Kakashi said. The sword came flying at them and everyone hit the ground. Kashina ducked out of the way. 
Kakashi did the same. Mema tackled Narumi to the ground, and Sasuke tackled Tazuna and Sakura to the ground. Naruto just vanished from the area and nobody knew where he was. The sword slammed into a tree, and a man appeared on top of it. They were all staring at this man with intensity, and Mema started to grin. Here it is, my chance to shine. I'm ready this time. Mema thought. Well, well, if it isn't Zabuza Mamachi, rogue ninja from a village hidden in the mist. Kakashi said. Rogue ninja? Whatever. Nothing's gonna stop me. I've been trained by the best ninjas from my village. Mema thought and started to run towards Zabuza, but was stopped by Kakashi. You're in the way. Get back. Kakashi said. But why? Mema asked. He's not like those other ninja. He's in a whole other league. If he's a opponent, I'll need this. Kakashi said reaching for his headband. Kakashi of the Sharingan Eye. Did I get that right? It's too bad, huh? But you have to hand over the old man. Zabuza said. Sharingan? What is that? Mema thought as he never paid attention in school. What's he saying? Does he have some special power? Sakura thought. Now quick. Manji formation. Protect the bridge builder and stay out of this fight. I taught you teamwork. Now it's time to use it. I'm ready. Kakashi ordered and lifted up his headband revealing a Sharingan with three Tamo. Ah his eye. What is that? Mema thought. Well, looks like I get to see the Sharingan in action. This is an honor. Zabuza said. Everyone keeps saying Sharingan, Sharingan. Will someone please tell me what Sharingan is? Mema asked. Yeah, what is it? Narumi asked. Sharingan. A rare power that resides in the eyes. The user of this visual dejutsu can instantly see and comprehend any jinjutsu, ninjutsu and tojutsu, and reflect the attack back on the attacker. The Sharingan is a special rare form of dejutsu. However, there's more to the Sharingan than that. A lot more. Sasuke said. You got it right boy. But you've only scratched the surface. The Sharingan can analyze an opponent's technique and then copy it to the smallest detail. Zabuza said and mist started to form. As for you, Jonan, in the assassination unit of the Hidden Mist, we had a standing order to destroy you on sight. Your profile was in our bingo book. It called you the man who copied over 1000 jutsu. Kakashi, the copy ninja. Zabuza said and everyone was so busy focused on Kakashi and Zabuza that they didn't notice Naruto grab Kashina and disappear. Wow. That's so cool. Menma said. Kashina and Naruto. Would you grab me Kashina harshly whispered. Zabuza has an accomplice. Naruto said. Good, so let's grab whoever it is and take out Zabuza. Kashina said. No. Kakashi should be able to handle Zabuza. If the accomplice gets involved, then Menma, Narumi and Sasuke should be able to handle whoever it is. Naruto said. Sakura too. Kashina said and Naruto just looked at her. Okay not Sakura. If we're not here to grab the accomplice, then what are we doing here? Kashina asked. Have you been hearing voices since we came to the Land of Waves? Naruto asked. A little bit. All Yuzumaki clan leaders have been known to hear them. Yuzeshiagakura is close to the Land of Waves, so I've been hearing them. Why? Kashina asked. Because the same voices have been in my head since we reached the Land of Waves and they're getting stronger and stronger. Naruto said. That means you're definitely the next in charge. Kashina said sadly. I know. But the thing is, something else is calling out for me in the same direction. It's telling me to come and release them or come save them. I wanna check it out. Naruto said. We're in the middle of a mission. Kashina said. So let's make a blood clone with a reinforcement seal on them and head to see what's calling out to me. They'll never know the difference and we can release the clones when we get back. It's something over there still, something important and I want to grab whatever it is before an enemy finds a way to get into the island. Naruto said and Kashina thought about it for a few seconds. All right, let's go. Kashina said. They made their blood clones and had them go back and watch over Team 7. The real Kashina and Naruto took off towards Yuzushiagakur. They ran across the water quickly and were grateful for their large chakra reserves and high stamina levels. They both ran full speed which was a shock to Kashina that Naruto kept up with her because she had Kage level speeds due to her keeping up with training after giving birth. She wasn't as fast as Minato or the fourth Raikage, but she was close to them. Naruto, how fast are you? Kashina asked while running. I don't know. 
Ever since I learned how to make resistance seals and have them increase when it became too easy for me to move around, I've never deactivated them. Naruto said. You do realize I'm running at full speed right? Kashina asked. Now, I do. I thought you were running slow in order for me to keep up. Naruto said. I think if you deactivated the seals you'd be as fast as the fourth Raikage. Anyway, we should get there in a few more minutes, and I know the voices are getting louder for you since they are for me. Kashina said. Yeah, they are. Naruto said. What are you going to do with whatever you find? It could be sealing notes or weapons. Kashina said. Whatever it is, you can have it. There's got to be more Yuzumaki alive out in the world hiding. There's no way they didn't have a backup plan to get the young children out of the village in case of an attack. There must be more out there. Naruto said. Are you sure you don't want it? Kashina asked. We both know when you pass over the title of clan head that I'll be away from the village. I don't want the clan head seat Narumi can have it. Naruto said. Where will you go? Kashina asked. Another dimension. Naruto said. How's that even possible? A seal or something? Kashina asked. No. What I'm about to show you cannot be repeated to anyone. Naruto said. What is it? Kashina asked. This. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. What the hell? How? Kashina yelled, and Naruto went on to explain everything to her about the Nine Tails, and how he unlocked his Sharingan. Let me get this straight. The Nine-Tailed Fox is no longer inside of you, and is now split into two with Mema and Narumi each holding a half. The Nine-Tailed Fox also unlocked your Sharingan, which is from Minato's lineage that he doesn't even know about, and the Nine Tails also gave you an incredible healing ability. Kashina said. Yeah. Naruto said. Wait, the Sharingan doesn't have any abilities that can open a portal to a different dimension. Kashina said. Yes it does. Naruto said and activated his Manjikyu Sharingan, Naka's Manjikyu design. What is that? Kashina asked. This is the Manjikyu Sharingan. The fourth level after the usual three Tomo Sharingan and is only activated after a deep emotional situation. It is usually activated when somebody close to you dies. Naruto said sadly. Shisui is what caused you to activate your Manjikyu. Kashina said. Yeah. I've had it since I was seven. The Manjikyu grants you better vision and unique abilities, like the Kamui, Tsukiyomi, Kodamatsukami, Amaterasu, Kagetsuchi, Izanami, Izanagi and Zuzunu. Naruto said. What's the price? This sounds too good to not come with a price. Kashina said. The price is if you overuse the Manjikyu Sharingan then you become blind and must seek out a pair of Manjikyu Sharingan eyes from a relative to achieve eternal light. Naruto said. None of your relatives have the Sharingan though. So you'll become blind then. Kashina said. No. I already have a pair of eyes sealed away that were given to me. The Nine Tails tweaked my Manjikyu, so I can use any pair of eyes to gain eternal light. Naruto said. Whose eyes? Kashina asked. Shizui's. After he died he gave his eyes to Itachi who gave them to me, saying Shizui wanted me to have them. Naruto said. How close are you to losing your eyesight? Kashina asked. I'm still a long way away from losing it. I've only used my Manjikyu abilities on the Anbu that Enzo would say. What abilities do you have? Kashina asked. Tsukiyomi, Kamui, Amaterasu and Kagetsuchi. I guess I have the Zuzunu as well, but I just haven't unlocked it yet. I've pretty much got all of those abilities completely mastered. You should know about the Kamui. Naruto said. How would I know? Kashina asked. It's how that masked man who claimed to be Madara Ichiha was able to move you so quickly. Naruto said. How do you know about that? Kashina asked. He tried to capture me when I was training a few years ago. I have the Uzumaki sensing ability, but mine is enhanced so I was able to sense him coming. I tricked him with a shadow clone, and due to me talking to the Nine Tails I told him that I knew about everything that happened when we were born. He'll be back so if you want Mema and Narumi to live, then you better make sure they are trained seriously. He might have a group of people gathered up right now to capture all the tailed beasts. Itachi told me about this group called the Akatsuki that he's joining. Naruto said. Why didn't you say anything? Kashina asked. When it happened, we didn't exactly have a relationship. Actually we never even talked unless it was me getting in trouble for something Menma and Narumi did. After a while, none of you actually paid attention to me. Naruto said. I know. 
I was too caught up in Menma and Narumi being the child or children of prophecy that I was neglecting you. It took Anko bringing you home one day after she helped you train for me to realize I was neglecting you. Kashina said. It's water under the bridge now. We're actually like a mother and son now. Naruto said. I don't know everything though. Who was that girl on your fifth birthday? I haven't seen her around the village at all. Kashina said. Her name's Raven. She wasn't from this dimension and was here because her mother was showing her how to use her powers. She actually gave me a gift that day. Naruto said and pulled out the violet kunai. That's a nice kunai. I didn't know they made kunai this color though. Kashina said. They don't. Raven used her powers to make this and even engraved her name on it. Naruto said. Wait, is she the reason you want to go to a different dimension? Kashina asked. I got the idea from her mother when she said they weren't from this dimension. It would be nice to look for Raven when I leave, but I'm not really looking for her. I just want to go somewhere and be happy. Naruto said. I know. How are you going to open a dimension portal though? Kashina asked. I've been working on a jutsu with my Manjikyu Sharingan. It's called Dimension Pteru. I haven't really gotten it to work yet, but it's about 65% complete. I'll have it done in a few months hopefully. Naruto said. How did you come up with that? Kashina asked. It happened one day when I was practicing the Kamui. If I can trap things in a pocket dimension that only I can access, I thought about being able to transfer myself to another dimension itself. I combine it with the power of the Kamui and Horation, but it only works with the Manjikyu Sharingan. It's supposed to open up a portal that allows me to walk through it and enter another dimension. Naruto said. That's impressive. I do have to admit though, I don't want to see you leave. Kashina said. I know. Maybe we'll be lucky enough to get a summoning contract and sign it. We'll be able to send letters through them. The summoning jutsu is basically like dimension traveling. Naruto said. Well let's find one that we can both agree on that will work for us. Kashina said as they reached Yuzushiagakur. Wow, this place is amazing despite all of the destroyed buildings and skeletons. Naruto said. I know. I grew up here and had a few friends before I was moved to Konoha. Kashina said. You realize they kept you and Mito in Konoha because they wanted the Uzumaki ceiling scrolls, right? Naruto asked. Of course I knew that. What they didn't know was that only an Uzumaki can learn those seals, because only an Uzumaki can read them. I guess that's why Menma can't read them, since his Namaka's genes are dominant. Narumi was able to read it, but it was too complicated for her to understand. You on the other hand, I don't know. Neither of your genes are dominant. It shows in your hair half blonde half red it's amazing. Kashina said. Maybe it's because I can use the Uzumaki chakra chains. Naruto said. You can use the Uzumaki chakra chains. Kashina said as her hair split up into nine flowing parts. Yeah. Naruto said shrinking away. Why didn't you tell me? Kashina yelled. I thought you knew. I used them a lot to get practice. It must have slipped my mind. Naruto said. I'll accept that answer. Now we've reached the center of the village, and the voices are the loudest here. Kashina said. They entered the main building of the Uzumaki clan and walked over to a seal on the wall. Kashina and Naruto both poured chakra into the wall, and it crumbled away. The voices became even louder giving them both a headache. They walked down some stairs, and Naruto had to use his fire manipulation to create a flame in his hand. This impressed Kashina because she's never seen anything like that before. They reached the end of the steps and stood looking at about 15 to 20 scrolls that they knew were sealing scrolls. They also saw a blood red sword on the wall with a pitch black handle. Kashina grabbed the sword and spaced out for a minute before she came back to reality and gave Naruto the sword who did the same thing. That son of a bitch. I can't believe he'd go so far as to sell us out. I'm going to kill him. Kashina said. I feel the same mom, but Anzo needs to be dealt with carefully. At least we know that there were a lot of Uzumaki who fled before they were wiped out. Right now we need to focus on getting the rest of the stuff in this vault, and then activate the seal that will destroy every trace of the Uzumaki clan on the land. Naruto said. You're right. I still want Enzo dead. He goes after my baby and then I find out he's the reason why my people were wiped out. His days are numbered. Kashina said and Naruto walked over to the scroll that was by itself. Whoa. Naruto said. What? Kashina asked. It's the Uzumaki summoning scroll. It says only those who are able to hold the sword without getting electrocuted will be able to sign the contract. 
Naruto said. What contract is it? Kashina asked. It's the bird summoning contract. The eagles and falcons created a lifelong contract with the Uzumaki clan, only being available to those who were able to hold the blood red sword they created for us. The Uzumaki quickly accepted the contract because the eagles represented inspiration, release from bondage, victory, longevity, speed, pride and royalty. The falcon represents vision, freedom, and victory. All of these were traits required to hold the sword. However since the attack happened, no one was able to ever sign the contract. I guess the eagles and falcons have been somehow updating the scroll after the clan was wiped out. Naruto said. Let's sign it then. Kashina said and they both signed their names in blood and watched as both their names turned golden. Should we summon them now? Naruto asked. No. Let's zeal up the sword and the rest of the scrolls. Everything that wasn't taken to Konoha with Mito and me is all in here. Kashina said. They both zealed the scrolls away and left the temple. They walked around the island and Kashina gave Naruto a bit of a history lesson on their fallen family and even told him stories about her life before she came to Konoha. Naruto listened to every word she said because what she's telling him wasn't learned in the academy. Nightfall came and they were standing up high on a tree. Kashina activated the seal and watched as everything was absorbed into it and watched as the seal burned away into nothing erasing all traces of the Uzumaki clan from living here. Let's go back. Kashina said. We'll need a ride. Naruto said. Let's summon a creature from a contract. Kashina said biting her thumb going through hand signs. Summoning Jutsu. A large puff of smoke appeared and a loud screech came from within the smoke. The smoke blew away and a large 50-foot eagle was standing before Naruto and Kashina. I see we have two new summoners. I am Remo, leader of the eagle clan. It is a pleasure to meet you, Naruto and Kashina Uzumaki. Although, the boy has an odd color of hair. Remo said. He's half Uzumaki and apparently his genes couldn't dominate the other, so apparently it's somehow adapted, and he gained powers from both of his clans. Kashina said. He's only a half Uzumaki and he was able to hold the sword and sign the contract? The boy must be something special. Now, I am the boss of the eagles and only wish to be summoned during battle, however since it is the first time I've been summoned, I'll allow it this time. What do you require of me? Remo asked. We need a lift back to the land of waves. We ran here and were too tired to run back tonight. I have my other children over there as well, and I'd like to get back to them as quickly as possible. Kashina said. More Yuzumaki? You should have them sign the scroll. Remo said. They won't be able to sign it or hold the sword. Kashina said. Why not? Remo asked. One of them can't read the Yuzumaki Vyunjutsu scrolls, and the other can read them, but it's too complicated for her to understand. Neither of them meet the requirements to sign the scroll or hold on to the sword. Kashina said. Yet this one is able to completely read the Uzumaki scrolls, understand the Fuinjutsu and hold the sword and sign the scroll. This is interesting. Now, hop on and I'll give you a lift back to the Land of Waves. Remo said. Land of Waves. After getting dropped off at the Land of Waves by Remo, Kashina and Naruto walked around Wave Country a bit and saw how much Gato was affecting them. The entire place looked like the slums in Konoha, and it made both of them angry. They made it to Tazuna's house, and after destroying their blood clones and receiving the memories of what happened while they were gone, Kashina couldn't help but frown. Memo almost got himself killed running into the fight between two elite ninja, and if it wasn't for Kashina's clone using her chakra chains, Memo would be dead right now. He's in for it tomorrow. Kashina said. Zabuza will bring backup. He's still alive and knows he can't take you and Kakashi on by himself. From his injuries, I'd say he'll be back in about another week or two. Naruto said. How do you know that? Kashina asked. Shizun taught me about the human body, injuries and how to mend broken bones, place a cast or just wrap a bandage the proper way before she left with Tsunade. I know how to do the mystic palm jutsu, but that's all I'd be able to learn due to my chakra being so dense and having such high reserves. She also gave me the talk about men and women, which I might add was kind of disturbing at the time. Naruto said. Would she give you the talk at such a young age? Kashina asked. She said the life of a ninja can bring many surprises, and she didn't want me to be unprepared for anything, so she gave me the talk. Naruto said. I guess I'll have to give Menma and Narumi the talk. Kashina said. Menma might not listen. He's a bit like Kiba when it comes to women. 
Narumi will listen since she still has that fascination of meeting her one true love or being rescued on some big mission and falling in love. Naruto said. Why do you know that? Kashina asked. I sat behind her, Sakura and Dino during the academy every day for years. It's all they would talk about. Naruto said. Let's just get some sleep. We'll deal with everything tomorrow. Kashina said. Next day. I think I overdid it with my Sharingan. Kakashi thought. Waking up, huh? Are you alright? Tsunami asked. I've been better. It'll be a week before I can move normally. Kakashi said zitting up. See, it's better if you don't move, so just lie down. Tsunami said. Right. Kakashi said. Look, Sensei's coming around. Menma said. Listen, Sensei, your Sharingan is amazing and everything, but if it puts that much strain on you, maybe it's not worth it. Sakura said. Sorry. Kakashi said. Ha. Huh. Well, you did take down one of the most powerful ninja assassins, so we'll be safe for a while. Tazuna said. Right, you know that boy with the mask? What about him? Sakura asked. He's from the elite tracking unit of the village hidden in the mist. Those masks are only worn by the most elite shinobi. Kakashi said. What exactly do they do? Sakura asked. The Anbu Black Ops, also known as the Inferno Squad, destroy all traces of a rogue ninja's corpse. The shinobi body contains many secrets. Ninjutsu, chakra and special medicines used on his body. These are the secrets of his village, and if an enemy were to get a hold of them, their village would be in grave danger. For instance, if I were to die at the hands of an enemy, he would try to analyze my Sharingan. In the worst case, my entire jutsu could be stolen and used against our home village. It is the sacred duty of the shinobi trackers to prevent this. To keep the village secret safe. If a ninja betrays his village, the trackers hunt him down, eliminate him and obliterate every trace of his existence. That's their specialty. Kakashi said. That's so cool. Maybe I should do that before I become Hokage. I'd be the perfect assassin. Menma thought. I have one more question. If the Sharingan is only exclusive to the Uchiha clan, why does it put so much strain on your body? Sakura asked. Yeah. Shouldn't you be used to it by now? Narumi asked. It's because that Sharingan eye isn't his. Naruto said walking into the room with Kashina. What do you mean? Sakura asked. What I mean is, that Sharingan wasn't originally his to begin with. It's an implant that he obtained during the Third Shinobi War. Naruto said. You stole that eye. Sasuke yelled. No, he didn't steal it. It was gifted to him by a friend. An old teammate who passed away. I won't tell the story because it isn't mine to tell. He feels so much strain from the Sharingan, because the amount of chakra the Sharingan requires is too much, and his body and reserves can't handle the stress, since he's not an Ichiha. That's why he keeps it covered up with his headband all the time to prevent it from draining his chakra. Naruto said. How does a loser like you know so much about the Sharingan? Menma asked. I was trained by Shizui and Itachi. Arguably two of the best Sharingan users in the history of the Ichiha clan. The only other people I can put in that category are Madara Ichiha, Izuna Ichiha, Fugaku Ichiha also known as Wicked Eye Fugaku, Naku Ichiha, Naori Ichiha, Kagami Ichiha, and if he would have lived long enough, Abito Ichiha. Who is the only known Ichiha to unlock his Sharingan with two Tamo in each eye? Naruto said. Why would they tell you so much about the Sharingan? Isn't it illegal to share clan secrets? Sakura asked. Everything they've told me was given approval by Fugaku Uchiha who was the clan head at the time. I've spent a lot of time with the Uchiha clan before they were killed, and I was pretty much an honorary Uchiha. Of course he had to talk it over with the elders of the clan, but they approved of it. Naruto said. Since I am now clan head. I demand you teach me everything you know. Sasuke said. You're not the clan head. Your brother is still alive and is technically still the clan head since he's the oldest. Unless he dies or comes back to the village and hands over the clan Z to you, you're nothing more than a second-hand Ichiha. Naruto said. Enough with the history lesson. We need to start training. Kashina said. Training for what mom? Narumi asked. Yeah, we've already completed the mission. Menma said. No, we didn't. The bridge is still not complete, and Zabuza is still alive. The hunter Nin didn't kill him yesterday. He used Zenbin needles and put Zabuza in a death-like state. He'll be up and running in an hour, and will most likely have that fake hunter Nin with him as well as backup. Kashina said. 
What are we going to be training in? Narumi asked. Maybe a new awesome jutsu like Dad's Rasengan. Menma said. No. We're all working on chakra control and ninja etiquette, since Menma almost got himself killed yesterday rushing into a fight he was ordered to stay out of. Kakashi said. What? Menma, Narumi and Sakura said at the same time. You heard me. Now everyone get to the forest. Kakashi ordered. Forest. All right. Training starts now. First, we will begin with a review of chakra. Kakashi said. Are you kidding me? This is what you're going to start with? We have about a week before Zabuza returns with reinforcements and you want to have an academy lesson. You really do suck as a teacher. I'm going to train on my own. Naruto said and walked away. He's right Kakashi. A lesson that sat through in the academy for seven years and probably slept through isn't going to help. Kashina said. Well, can you grab him so we can start re-walking? Kakashi asked. He was walking on water. I don't think he needs to learn tree walking like the rest of them. Kashina said. Why not? Sakura asked. Because water walking is more advanced than tree walking. You don't learn water walking until you master tree walking to the point it becomes second nature to you. Kashina said. Well have him teach us then. Mena said. Yeah. It's not fair that he can get special treatment for training. Narumi said. Excuse me who the hell do you think you're talking to? You want to talk about special treatment. You two have been trained by the best ninja in the village ever since you were five and still are. Special treatment my ass. Next time you decide to talk to me like that you regret it. Kashina said. Not like you can do much. Dad's the Hokage. Menma mumbled and Narumi agree with him. He may be the Hokage, but I'm your Jonin instructor. I can make your days as a genin a living hell. I can make it so that not even the small healing factor you have will help you with your wounds. Now pay attention while I go help Naruto with his training. Kakashi, if they give you any problems, let me know. Kashina said and vanished. Naruto. Naruto was sitting on the ground in a meditative position when Kashina arrived to where he ran off to. She was going to walk up to him, but then she noticed all of the storage zeals on the surrounding trees. She felt a small wave of chakra come off of Naruto, and then multiple kunai and shuriken started shooting out of the seals he placed around on the trees. She watched as he dodged every single shuriken and kunai that came at him gracefully, and started to throw her own kunai and shuriken to throw off his rhythm. Naruto knew she was there, but didn't mind it at all. He noticed her throwing in more kunai and shuriken as well, and that forced him to pick up speed and dodge quicker. The second wave of kunai and shuriken came out, but this time there were exploding tags on the ends of the kunai, and they would explode on contact if they touched him. Kashina did the same thing and once they got towards the end. He was surrounded in all directions by kunai with exploding tags, and they were coming at him fast. He activates his manjikyu sharingan and prepares to use the kamui to escape. The kunai all reached him at the same time, and Kashina was worried because all she saw was a smoke screen after the explosion, and Naruto didn't move. The smoke cleared, and Kashina saw Naruto standing there surrounded by a light blue ribcage, and standing there perfectly fine, except he was breathing heavy. The ribcage faded away and Naruto collapsed to the ground panting on one knee. Are you okay? Kashina asked walking up to him. Yeah, I'm okay. Naruto said. What was that? I've never seen a jutsu like that before. Kashina said. It's the Zusanu. It's only in its beginning phase though. The one Shizui used was a lot bigger and looked like a humanoid creature. Naruto said. Why was yours so basic then? Kashina asked. Because it was in its beginning phase. That's the first time I've ever used it, and I can tell it drains the chakra a lot. I'll keep practicing with it until it doesn't drain me as much. Naruto said. Well you can wait on that. You need to complete your dimension jutsu thingy, remember? Kashina asked. I thought you didn't want me to leave? Naruto asked. I don't, but that's me being selfish. You're technically an adult now and I can't stop you from leaving. I tried to keep the family together over the years, and you've even given them a shot. I guess I tried too late. I was taught by a lot of Uzumaki, and Mito was my mentor when I came to Kanoha. The main thing they always taught me was that family sticks together no matter what. We're not a family anymore and I honestly don't think we ever were from the beginning. As the current head of the Uzumaki clan, I am granting you freedom from the clan when you decide to leave. It's the best that I can do. Yes it will be hard to watch you leave, but I'd rather you be happy somewhere else than miserable and angry while staying here. 
As your mother, I just want you to be happy in life. Kashina said. You did try and it was never too late. You started to spend time with me a little bit after the Achia massacre, and I was only seven. It wasn't too late we were still young, but Menma and Narumi had the Hokage, and that perverted grandfather pumping their heads with lies making them feel as if they were invincible. One thing I did notice when we weren't having the best time, you never pampered Menma and Narumi. I figured if anybody was going to try and fix things between us it would be you. As for leaving I'll make sure to send you letters through our summons. I know you'll find a way to come and get me if I didn't. Naruto said and they both laughed. You're damn right I would. But can you do me one favor? Kashina asked. Sure. Naruto said. Can you just wait until after the Chunin exams to leave? Minato has forbidden you from becoming a Chunin until you're no longer a flight risk and wants to have you monitored in the village. I know the fire daimyo will be there so he can overrule Minato and make you a Chunin. I just want you to pass the Chunin exams before you leave. Can you do that for me? Kashina asked. I guess I can. I'll also do something else for you. Last night I couldn't sleep so I went through some of the notes from the Uzumaki clan, and I found out that they've somehow made a seal that lets the clan head see all of the current living Uzumaki. I looked at it and saw that even I was in there, but that was my first time being in Yuzashiagakur. Naruto said. I know about that. What about it? Kashina asked. It showed that there were three more Yuzumaki still alive out there. We're close to one of them as she's up north on the Forgotten Island a few miles past Yuzashiagakur and recently sent out a distress signal. There's one alive in Kusa and one in Odo. It says that when the clan leader touches the scroll, they will be marked with a tracker seal, and it gives off the location to where any lost Yuzumaki can find whoever the leader is. It's not much, but it's the least I can do for everything you've done for me over the last few years. Naruto said. That's more than enough. You've given back my family something I've lost over 20 years ago. What were their names? Kashina asked. Hinoki Uzumaki, Karen Uzumaki and Teai Uzumaki. Naruto said. I'll have to look out for them. I'll know when they're close due to the seal I'll get. Maybe they'll be in the Chunin exams this year, and since they're held in Kanoha this time, maybe I'll meet them since every village is invited this year. Kashina said jumping up and down. Maybe Karen and Teaya will be in the exams. Karen is the same age as me, and Teaya is a year older. Hanoka is a few years younger than you. Naruto said. Are you calling me old? Kashina asked with an eye twitch. Ah, uh, no. Even if I was it wouldn't matter. With your Uzumaki genes, even though you're almost 40, your body still functions like you're not even 20, and you still look the same from when we were a teenager. Even Tsunade still looks young except a few greys, but that's because she started heavily drinking after the war. I don't understand why she still uses a Jinjutsu to hide her appearance. Naruto said. Wait, she looks the same underneath her Jinjutsu? Even her boobs Kashina asked. Yeah. I was able to see through her Jinjutsu with my Sharingan secretly activated one day and she looks exactly the same. Naruto said. Enough about her. How far are you on your Jutsu? Kashina asked. I'm not sure. I think I've got it but something weird keeps happening. Naruto said. Weird how? Kashina asked. When I activated the Jutsu, the violet kunai I have from Raven started to give off power and it locked onto some type of dimension. The portal still isn't big enough and when I try to expand it so I can walk through it, I lose focus. My chakra control isn't that great and I'm guessing that's the problem. Naruto said. Well, maybe the portal you opened is where Raven is right now. Perhaps it's guiding you to her if her power from the kunai is affecting the portal. As for chakra control, what exercises have you done? Kashina asked. Leaf balancing, kunai balancing, senbin balancing, pebble balancing. I even started to move the leaves and pebbles along my body. I've done tree walking and water walking. That's all I could find in Kanoha. Naruto said. That's the problem. Those are like basic chakra control exercises for an Uzumaki. We have our own chakra control exercises. Waterfall walking and whirlpool walking. You have to do each of these for an hour straight before you've officially completed them. Then you have to stand on a boulder and prevent it from rolling downhill with your own chakra. Coincidentally, doing the boulder one will help you gain an affinity for earth for some weird reason. I have a wind, water and earth affinity. Maybe I'll teach you a thing or two from my jutsu collection. Kashina said. I'll be looking forward to that. Naruto said. Lastly, this is what Tsunade does. 
you have to separate five different colors of sand using your own chakra. Now, after completing these you won't have complete control over your chakra, but that's only because Yuzumaki reserves are always growing. At most you'll have the reserves of a tailed beast, but only with high sen into low kage level control. Kashina said. How much chakra do you have mom? Naruto asked. I did have as much chakra as the seven tails, but after having the nine tails ripped out of me, my reserves took a big hit, and they shrunk down to the size of the four tails. I have low kage level control. It's impossible for an Uzumaki to have complete control over their chakra. It's too dense and never really stops growing. Kashina said. Well, right now I'd say I have as much chakra as the two tails, and my control is at elite jonin level by Kanoha standards. Naruto said. By Uzumaki standards that's about mid shunin level control. You're on a good pace right now, and you should have these chakra control exercises done by the chunin exams. Kashina said and Naruto just groaned. Don't worry you'll be fine. I won't go that hard on you during training. Kashina said unconvincingly. It's not that. Teammate just got here. Why are they here? Who sent a messenger bird to ask for backup? Naruto asked. Kakashi was out of whack last night and told Sakura to send a bird to Minato. She told me this morning and since teammate doesn't have a civilian with them, it took them less time to get here than it took us. Kashina said. Great. Can we just get started on training? Naruto asked. Sure. Let's head over to some water and I'll create the whirlpool for you. Kashina said. They left and once they found a big enough source of water, Kashina created a whirlpool and demonstrated how Naruto was supposed to do this exercise. He had to stand on the edge of the whirlpool and balance himself while trying not to move with the current. After that he had to move closer to the center, and then after he was done, he would need to run in the opposite direction of the whirlpool. To say Naruto had a hard time was an understatement. He couldn't even get past the edge of the whirlpool. Kashina was having a blast teasing him and laughing at him every time he fell into the water. They trained for hours until Naruto was finally able to get past the edge of the whirlpool. Kashina even started to spar with him while he was doing the exercise to make it more difficult on him. She told him that if he's leaving for another dimension she wants to make sure that he's ready for anything thrown his way. A couple more hours went by, and Kashina figured that was enough for today. Alright Naruto. That's enough for today. Kashina said and stopped the whirlpool. That was harder than I expected. Naruto said breathing heavy. Of course it is. It took me two months to actually do it. At the rate you're going right now, it shouldn't take you no more than a month to complete it. Now let's get back. Kashina said and they left. To Zuna's house. I really don't get why they're here. We don't need backup. Naruto said as they walked up to the house. True, but just be nice and please don't kill Kiba. I know all about your problems with him. Kashina said. My problems? I don't even talk to him. Actually I don't talk to any of the people I graduated with. Naruto said. Not even Shikamaru? Kashina asked. No. I'd rather not speak to someone who doesn't understand when someone doesn't want to be figured out. That's all he did during the academy is take glances at me and try to figure out who I am and how strong I am. It's annoying and Dino does the same thing. Her always wanting something to gossip about will get her killed one day if she doesn't relax. Naruto said. What about Choji? He seems nice. Kashina said. Choji can't think for himself and always has his head up Shikamaru's ass. Naruto said. Well were you friends with anybody in the academy? Kashina asked. I was friends with Sakura for about a week, but her fangirl ways were too much for me to handle, so I stopped talking to her. I'm friends with Tenten who's a year older than us. Other than that, I don't have any friends. Naruto said as they entered the house and everyone looked at them. Kashina, Naruto. It's nice to see you. Kurinai said. Nice to see you as well, Kurinai. Kashina said. I guess the mission was too much for you to handle since you needed backup. Kiba said trying to tease Naruto. Shino, if that bug touches me you're not leaving this mission alive. Naruto said and Shino nodded as his bug came back to him. Naruto, do you really have to be mean? Kurinai asked and Naruto just shrugged. Anyway, I've already given Kurinai the update on the mission and what's been happening lately. Kakashi said. So what's the plan? Kashina asked. Well, all of the Jonin will go to the bridge to help protect the bridge builder at the end of the week, and the Jenin will stay here. Throughout the week two Jenin will accompany him to the bridge and will signal off a flare if anything goes wrong. 
Kakashi said and Kashina just looked at him. That's a stupid idea. Naruto said. You have something better? Kurenai asked. Yes, I do. At the end of the week, everyone but two genin should go to the bridge. Two should stay at the house just in case Gato tries to pull a fast one and send somebody to grab the little boy that mopes around all day and his mother. Zabuza will have backup including the fake hunter Nin. Sasuke, Menma, Narumi and Kiba should be enough to take her on. Shino and Hinata should stay at the house. I'll help fight whoever Zabuza brings as backup. Naruto said. I have a feeling I know who his backup will be. Naruto thought. I like his plan better. Kashina said. Why does he get to fight the backup? Mena asked. Because he's stronger than all of you combined. Kurunai said. He's not that strong. Kiba said puffing out his chest. Didn't he already beat you in the academy? Shino asked. Shut up. Kiba said. We'll go with Naruto's plan. It's actually better than mine. Maybe you should lead this team instead. Kakashi said. No. Naruto said. As an Ichiha, I should be the one fighting the extra backup. Sasuke said. Yeah. Sasuke deserves to fight the strongest there is. Sakura said. Then how about I fight Sasuke then? I am the strongest shinobi in this house with Kakashi or Naruto being a close second. Kashina said. You can't be serious. Narumi said. That loser isn't stronger than me. Mema said. He's already proven to be better than you when he easily took you out after you attacked him using the Nine Tails Chakra. Kashina said. That was a fluke. I'll be the best ninja in history. I'm going to become Hokage and be known as a hero. Mema said and Naruto just walked towards the door. Where are you going Naruto? Kashina asked. To bond with nature. You're all giving me a headache. Naruto said and left. I'm giving him a headache. Kashina said with her hair going wild. Forest. Naruto found a clearing in the forest to train and created 30 shadow clones. He split them all up in groups to work on getting hand signs for all of his jutsus down to the minimum amount. He himself started going through his tojutsu katas for each of his styles. He trained for about two hours before he stopped because he felt a chakra signature slowly coming towards him. He released his clones and jumped into the trees, activating a seal he created that makes it impossible for the Byakugan to find him. He looked down and sure enough, Hinata was looking around for him with her Byakugan activated. H he was just here. He can't hide from the Byakugan, it's impossible to hide from it. Hinata said. She looked around for about 30 minutes before giving up and returning back to the house. Naruto sighed and started sorting through the memories from his clones and noticed the lighting jutsus either needed no hand signs now or at least two. His fire jutsus all needed one or two hand signs. His water jutsus were down to one hand sign, and his wind jutsus required no hand signs except for one. He smirked at this and was proud that he'd have an advantage that most people didn't have. He channeled fire chakra into his hand and created a small flame in his hand. He thrust his hand forward, and the fire came off his hand in the form of a comet. He thought for a minute before coming up with a name for it. Fire style. Fire comet seems to have a nice sound to it. I'll change the name if I think of a better one. Naruto said. He continued to train more and more throughout the night until he physically couldn't. Once he was done he kept training, but instead of physical training, he decided to do some mental training. He started to meditate focusing on the sounds of the animals in the forest and the way the air felt. He was meditating so much that he didn't notice the animals starting to surround him. He was completely relaxed and he could feel his chakra running smoothly throughout his body and it was easier to control. Pretty soon he was surrounded by every animal in the forest and they were all seemingly relaxing all around him laying down. This went on until the early morning hours and the animals in Naruto sensed someone coming into the area. The animals all left and once the person came into view, Naruto was leaning against the tree like he was asleep. The person walked over to Naruto and reached out for him. I wouldn't do that unless you're prepared to die. Naruto said and opened his eyes and saw a girl looking at him. He took a look at this girl and took in her appearance. She had long black hair, pale skin and large dark brown eyes, and a slender frame. She wore her long hair loosely and wore a pink sleeveless kimono with pale red edges and decorated with small plum-colored swirls that went to her ankles. Around her waist was a simple white obi tied in a bow and she wore a pair of light brown sandals with dark straps. She also wore a dark colored choker around her neck. You'll catch a cold if you sleep out here. She said. I wasn't sleeping. 
Who are you and what are you doing here? Naruto asked. I'm gathering herbs for treating illnesses and human wounds. She said. You're out this early? Naruto asked. I like it early. It's calm. I didn't think I'd find anyone out here in the woods. If you weren't sleeping, then what were you doing? She asked. I was training. Naruto said. So are you a ninja? She asked. Yeah, I am. Naruto said. Oh, really? I see. That's very impressive. Does that mean you're training for something dangerous? She asked. I could be, but I'm just training to get stronger and better at the moment. Naruto said. You seem pretty strong now. Isn't that enough? She asked. You can never have too much strength. There will always be someone stronger than you out there. Naruto said. Why do you wish to become strong? She asked. Because I have something to do. Naruto said. Are you training for a certain person or are you doing all this training for yourself? She asked. You can say that. Naruto said. Is there someone who's precious to you? She asked. A few. Why? Naruto asked. When a person has something precious that they want to protect, then they become genuinely strong. You will get strong, very strong. You have something to protect that is precious to you. That is true strength in protecting your precious people, is when you're at your strongest. She said as she grabbed her basket. I agree to a certain point. Having something precious to protect can give you strength. However, when that something to protect goes away, does it take your strength away and make you weak? Or does it push you to become stronger? Having something precious to protect shouldn't be the only reason you become strong. True strength is not measured when you're at your strongest, but when you're at your weakest. Take away those precious people you speak of, and then you'll see how strong you really are. Remember that. Naruto said. Goodbye. We'll meet again sometime. My name is Haku. Oh, by the way, I'm a boy. Haku said. Nice try, that may work on everyone else but not me. Boys don't wear chest bindings and smell like strawberries. It was nice meeting you Haku, tells Abusa I'm looking forward to seeing him on the bridge with his backup. Naruto said and vanished. The blush on Haku's face when he mentioned her chest bindings went away when he mentions Abusa. Haku turned around to attack him, but he was nowhere in sight. She sighed and put her senbin back in her basket and ran full speed toward their hideout. He knew all along. Why didn't he attack me? She thought. Tazuna's house. Where is Naruto, Menma and Sasuke? Kurunai asked. Naruto's been training since yesterday and hasn't been back. Menma and Sasuke went out to train on tree walking. Kakashi said. It's time for dinner. I wouldn't have expected Sasuke to be late. Menma on the other hand, I could see him being late. Sakura said. And maybe we should go look for them. Hinata said. That's a good idea. Kurunai said and then the door opened revealing a cut up Menma and Sasuke. We made it to the top. Menma said. Good. Now we move on. Starting tomorrow, you're both bodyguards for Tizuna. Kakashi said. Woohoo. Alright. Menma said. How come he's already done with the tree walking training before me? Narumi asked. Because he was actually training instead of complaining the entire time like you have been doing. Kakashi said. Would you all wait so long to teach them tree walking? Kurunai asked. I'm not really in charge, Kakashi is. He's been handling their training and I just give my input. He's had them working on teamwork exercises and silly D-rank missions. I tried to train them once, and besides Sasuke, they all complained that it was too difficult for them. Kashina said. What about Naruto? Doesn't he train with you? Kurunai asked. Kurunai, Naruto's way above Jinin level and I've allowed him to do his own training. All I know is that he comes back to check in from time to time and checks if we have a mission. Kakashi said. More like giving him special treatment. Narumi said. If you were at his level I'd allow you to train by yourself as well. Kakashi said. We are. Menma said. You are, but that's only if you're using over three tails of the nine tails chakra, and he's proven that he could still easily handle you. Kashina said. Well can we go and look for him? I'm hungry. Kiba said. I'm already here. Naruto said coming downstairs. When did you get here? Kakashi asked. An hour ago. Naruto said and sat down at the only open spot which was next to Hinata. He he's sitting right next to me. Hinata thought and blushed red before fainting. Weirdo. Naruto mumbled and everyone started eating. In a few more days, the bridge will be finished. 
I have you to thank for that. Tazuna said. You've all done great, but you still got to be careful. Tsunami said. I've been meaning to ask you this, but I haven't had the chance to until now. Why did you stay and protect me, even after I lied to bring you here? Tazuna asked. Those who stray from the path of justice have no courage, but under the wing of a strong leader, cowardice cannot survive. Kakashi said. Huh? Tsunami asked. That was a quote from the first Hokage. Kakashi said and Inari started crying. But why? Inari asked. Hmm? What did you say? Mema asked and Inari slammed his hands on the table. All this stupid training is a waste of time. Gato's got a whole army. They'll beat you down and they'll destroy you. These cool things you all say, they don't mean anything. No matter what you do, the strong always win and the weak always lose. You sicken me the most. You walk around as if you're untouchable. You think you're so cool, you'll be the first person to die, and I'll be the first person to say I told you so. Inari said pointing at Naruto. Is that so? Naruto asked calmly. Yes, it is. Your worthless attempts at saving this country are pitiful. Inari said. Then I guess Kaiza was pitiful then. Naruto said. Naruto. That's enough. Kashina said. No, we all sat here and listened to his pathetic sob story, so now you'll all sit here and listen to what I have to say. Naruto said calmly and then looked at Inari with a cold look in his eyes. You say I'll be the first to die? Then so be it. I'd rather go out fighting than lay down with my tail tucked between my legs like the bitch you're acting like. Kaiza was somebody you looked up to yet you sit here and spit on his name and everything he fought for. You've never done anything to help this village. All you do is sit on your ass and bitch and moan about how life isn't fair. You lost one person who was like a father while there are kids out on the streets who have lost all of their family. You're a coward and you'll be a coward until the day you die. Naruto said and drew a kunai at Inari, and it landed next to his head on the wall. If you don't want to fight for your country or do anything to help it. How about I kill you myself, and then you can go and tell Kaiza how much of a coward you've become. You're a disgrace to this country and a disgrace to your mother. People like you who refuse to even lift a finger to help make me sick. I've been here for a few days and I've already done more than you have. I've already helped fix up houses with my clones that are now turned into orphanages. I've already taken out some of Gato's men earlier and managed to grab some food for almost everyone in the village. I've given out blankets and clothes that I have sealed away, and I've given them hope. You on the other hand tell me what you've done for this village. Naruto said. That's enough. Kurenai said. No, it isn't. Apparently he's been allowed to act out whenever he wants. He's picked the wrong person to call out. Gato's gonna die and I'll be the one who kills him. Once he's dead, I'll be sure to wipe his blood on you. That'll give you something to bitch and complain about. This is the last time I want to hear your voice while I'm here. You whine or complain again, and you won't live to see Gato's dead body. Naruto said in a cold tone. You're just gonna. Inari didn't finish his sentence because he fell to the ground and started to foam out the mouth. Inari. Tsunami yelled and rushed to his side. What's wrong with him? Tazuna asked. It's a Jinjutsu. Kurunai said and dispelled the Jinjutsu, but used up a lot of chakra. Naruto. You don't attack the client. Kakashi said. I didn't. I attacked an annoying little brat. He was pissing me off and I already warned him. Naruto said. That was a B-ranked Jinjutsu. His body couldn't handle it. I was barely able to save him. Kurunai said. That wasn't a B-ranked Jinjutsu. It was a low-ranking C-ranked Jinjutsu. I'm leaving and I'll see you all at the bridge. Naruto said. Menma and Narumi were pissed off at Naruto's actions, and both channeled two tails of nine tails chakra, and launched themselves at Naruto. He ducked out of the way and when they rushed again, he kicked them both out of the house, and calmly walked out after them. Everyone else ran outside, especially Kashina because she knew Naruto was about to really hurt them. Naruto stop. Let me handle this. Kashina said. No. I'm tired of these two rotten little kids thinking they can just attack me with the nine tails chakra. It's time they learned their lesson. Naruto said. Menma and Narumi came running at him again, and he blocked both of their punches and slammed them into the ground. He grabbed Menma by his neck and choked him until his body went limp and he passed out. He threw him over to where everyone was, and the other genin were now terrified. Narumi grew another tail and was now faster than before, but Naruto was still able to track her. They started trading punches and kicks, and if you were a jonin or above, you could see that Naruto wasn't taking her seriously. 
he kicked Narumi into the air and then surprised everyone but Kashina by using a chakra chain that came out of his hand and made it wrap around Narumi. Get over here. Naruto said. He pulled the chain back to his body and Narumi came flying at him and was immediately caught with an uppercut. He grabbed her by the hair and then slammed her face first to the ground and slapped a seal on her suppressing the nine tails chakra. He kicked her over to everyone and they just looked at him with terrified looks on their faces. Kashina walked up to him and looked him right in his eyes. Come with me. She said and they walked away. Okay. For the remainder of this mission, nobody piss him off. I'd rather not have to fill out paperwork for more accidents. Kakashi said. He's a monster. Sakura said. No, he's just somebody who's had enough of being picked on. You all have had a hand in him being abused whether it be mentally or physically. He's reached his breaking point and isn't going to take it anymore. That was just pent-up aggression he's been brewing up over the years. I know Naruto and he's a good kid. Everything he said he did for this country is true because he did the same thing in the slums in Kanoha. Let's get these two inside, I doubt they'll wake up anytime soon. Kurunai said. What about Naruto and Kishina-sensei? Sakura asked. Kishina will handle him. Let's go back inside. Kakashi said. Kishina and Naruto. You know you're getting written up right? Kashina asked. I know. I really don't care. This has been coming for a long time and you know that. Naruto said. I'm not talking about Mema and Narumi. I'm talking about attacking Inari. He's considered a civilian and we're not allowed to harm civilians on missions. Kashina said. It's my first offense. The Chunin exams are coming up soon and even Minato wants all of his children in the Chunin exams. I'll get a 30 to 60 day suspension, maybe 90 days. He can't afford to have one of his kids removed from the ninja program because it would hurt his precious image. It would hurt him even more if news got out that a genin was able to wipe the floor with two jinchuriki that he's been personally training. Naruto said. Still, you can't go around attacking civilians on a mission that isn't a danger to our mission. Gato's thugs take them out all you want, anybody else is off limits. Now Tazuna and Tsunami most likely won't want you back in their home, so you'll have to camp for the next few days. I'll try to sneak you some food if I can. Just try to relax. Can you do that for me? Kashina asked. I guess I can. Naruto said. Good. Now, how did you get so strong in such a short amount of time? Kashina asked. I don't know. Only training I did was shortening hand signs for my jutsus, a bit of tojutsu training and some meditation. I did notice my chakra became easier to use after I was meditating. It's still not perfect, but it seems easier and more relaxed now. Naruto said. How are you able to touch the Nine Tails Chakra and not get hurt? I know you have an insane healing ability, but you should be burned by the Nine Tails Chakra. Kashina said. I held the Nine Tails for a few years, and what little chakra it had was flowing through my body. I'm immune to the effects of its chakra when I touch it since my body is used to it. Naruto said. I guess that makes sense. Tomorrow we're doing the whirlpool exercise again. It's just to test out your new level of chakra control to see how far it's come. Kashina said and gave him a kiss on the head. Be careful out here. I have to get back to the house and get on Menma and Narumi now. Kashina said and left. Naruto just sighed and looked up at the moon. If it wasn't for that promise to his mom to compete in the Chunin exams, he would leave as soon as his dimension jutsu was finished. He unsealed his camping equipment, and after setting it up and eating a bento box, he went to sleep thinking about the upcoming fight on the bridge. That's for today, hope did you enjoy this video, thanks for watching guys.